5.1 systems of linear equations and two variables. Solve the system by the substitution method. Now, systems of linear equations are different than just a bunch of linear equations that are unrelated because a system of linear equations, the variables are the same. So this x that you see there in the first equation is the same as this x in the second equation. The y that you see in the first equation is actually equivalent to the y in the other equation. So they share variables. That's why they're a system of linear equations, not just a random bunch of linear equations. Now, because these are equivalent, if, for instance, y is equal to 3x in the second one, that means this y that you see in the first one is actually also equal to 3x, right? Because again, they share variables. So what I could theoretically do is I could rewrite the first equation, but wherever I see a y, now I can instead write 3x because y is equal to 3x. Now, x plus 3x is 4x, and 4x is equal to 8. If I want to solve for x, I would say undo the multiplication of x by 4 by dividing by 4. And whatever I do to one side, I do to the other, giving me x is equal to 2. Now, you're not done at that point because a solution to a system of linear equations would include both the x and the y value, right? So it would be an x, a y. It would be an ordered pair. So while we have the x value as 2, we need our y value. Now, luckily, we have this equation y is equal to 3x. So we would say 3 times 2, which gives us a 6. So our answer is going to be x is equal to 2 and y is equal to 6. But the correct format to write it is as, as in as is as a ordered pair. x is 2 and y is 6. Now let's try the next one. And the next one's not set up for as nicely as the, the, the previous one in that it's not already solved for one of the variables. Now, any of these variables can be solved for. I can either solve for this x, this x, this y, or this y. So you have four options on this. Now, generally speaking, you want to pick the one with the coefficient closest to a positive 1. right? Now, in this case, uh, I have an 8, a 9, a 5, and a negative 1. Negative 1 is the closest because I can just flip that sign and turn it into a positive y. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to solve for this negative y. So that means I need to get rid of this positive 5x. And the way I do that is I subtract 5x. But whatever I do to one side, I do to the other, leaving me negative y is equal to negative 5x plus 8. Or y is equal to, right, I want to solve for positive y, not negative y, which means I divide both sides by a negative 1. Flip all the signs, in other words, right? So the negative y turns into a positive y. And the negative 5x over negative 1 turns into a positive 5x. And the positive 8 turns into a negative 8. Now that we've solved for the y here, we can go back to the original equation, and wherever we see a y in the original equation, the other equation, we can plug in 5x minus 8, which is what we're going to do. So 8x plus 9 times 5x minus 8 equals negative 72. So 8x, now 9 times 5x is 45x, 9 times negative 8 is negative 72 equals negative 72. So after distribution, now we're going to combine like terms. So I have an 8x plus 45x, which gives me 53x. We keep the negative 72 on both sides. Right? So now we have 53x minus 72 is equal to negative 72. Now I want to get this 53x by itself, so I have to undo the subtraction of 72 by adding 72, and whatever I do to one side, I do to the other, giving me 53x is equal to 0. And now we want to undo the multiplication of x by 53 by dividing by 53, and whatever we do to one side, we do to the other. It cancels out, leaving me x is equal to 0. Now, we have the x value, but we don't have the y value. But just like the other one, we actually solve for y, so we just plug it in right here, so we can say 5 times 0, which is x is equal to 0, so we just plug it in right there. And 5 times 0 minus 8, 5 times 0 is a 0, 0 minus 8 is negative 8. So we end up with y is equal to negative 8. Okay? So if I was to write this in order pair, it would be 0, negative 8. Now if I wanted to check my answers on either one of these, I would go back to the original equations and I would plug in the, the, the ordered pair, my answer, and it would have to make both of them true. So for instance, in the original uh, problem, previous problem, x plus y is equal to 8, you would say, well, 2 plus 6 is equal to 8. Well, yeah, 8 is equal to 8. Check. And you go to the second one, which is y plus 3x. Instead, you would put, well, 
y is a 6, so you'd say 6 is equal to 3 times 2, or 6 is equal to 6, check. So you can always check your answer just go by going back and plugging in your ordered pair into the equations. Now, if it only makes one of them true and not the other, it's not a solution. Again, they share variables, which means they have to have the same the same solution for both of them, right? It's not good enough that one out of two or later on two out of three. It has It's an all or nothing thing. It either makes all of them true or it's not a solution. Okay, so let's do a few more of these. Now, in this case, we're going to use the addition method or sometimes, sometimes called the elimination method. And basically what that means is I'm going to add some multiple of one equation to some multiple of another equation in order for the, them to cancel out one of the variables. And again, the reason we can just add and subtract these equations together, and we can't normally do that with linear equations, is they share variables. So this x here and this x here are the same x. This y here and this y here are the same y. So I can simply add these together. So I'm adding these equations together. 3x plus 3x is 6x. Positive 12y minus 12y cancel out. And then 6 plus 6 is equal to 12. We undo the multiplication of x by 6 by dividing by 6. Whatever we do to one side, we do to the other, giving me x is equal to 2. But we're not done. We only have the x value. We need the y value. So we need to go back to one of the original equations and plug in 2 for x. So we say 3 times x, or 3x, but instead of writing an x, I'm going to put a 2 there, plus 12y equals 6. 3 times 6 is 6. 3 times 2 is 6. So you get 6 plus 12y is equal to 6. We want to get the 12y by itself, so I have to get rid of this positive 6 by subtracting 6. And whatever we do to one side, we do to the other, giving me 12y is equal to 6 minus 6, or 0. We undo the multiplication of y by 12 divided by dividing by 12. Whatever we do to one side, we do to the other, giving me y is equal to 0. So the order pair is going to be 2, 0. Over here, we can do the same kind of thing. We're going to be adding the first equation to the second. Now, But in this case, something's wrong. If I add these together, nothing goes away. Nothing is eliminated. So there's an extra step here. And that step is we need to make sure they have the same coefficients, either the x's or the y's, but opposite signs. So for instance, the least common multiple of a 1 and a 4 is a 4. So to eliminate the x's, I would have to make them both 4's, except one of them would have to be have the opposite sign. So a positive 4 plus a negative 4. If I wanted to eliminate the y's, the least common multiple of a 4 and a 5 is going to be a 20, which is a much larger number. So I would make both of them 20s, except one would be a negative and one would be a positive. Now, since 4 is smaller than 20, it's probably best to get rid of the x's rather than the y's. They both work. There's nothing wrong with doing either one, but it's just easier, generally speaking, to deal with smaller numbers. So I'm going to get rid of the x's. And the way I'm going to get rid of the x's is I'm going to turn the coefficient of my x's all to 4. So I'm going to multiply this first equation by 4. Now. Since both of these had positive x's, I need to flip the sign of one of them, so I'm going to flip the sign of that. So I'm going to multiply the first equation, equation number 1, by 4, or negative 4. So negative 4 times x is a negative 4x. A negative 4 times positive 4 is a negative 16y. And then negative 4 times negative 11 is a positive 44. Okay, then we're going to add these together. So we say 4x pop plus negative 4x. Those x's cancel out. And then we say 5y plus negative 16y is negative 11y. And then we say negative 11 plus positive 44, which would give me a positive 33. Then we undo the multiplication of y by negative 11 by dividing by negative 11, giving me y is equal to negative 3. Now, we're not done in that we need both the x and the y value of this problem. So we would have to go back over to one of the original equations and plug it in. So I'm just going to pick the first one. It looks like a slightly simpler problem. So it's x plus 4y is equal to negative 11, except x plus 4y being negative 3 equals negative 11. So we end up with x positive 4 times negative 3 is a negative 12 equals negative 11. So we add 12 to both sides of the equation. And we end up with x is equal to a positive 1. Now we could actually go back and verify that if we wanted to, right? So write the answer as an ordered pair, 1 and negative 3. And if you wanted to, you could plug it in to both of the original equations and make sure that it made both of them true and it is the correct answer if you were so sufficiently motivated. So let's try a couple more of these. Let's say I wanted to add these together, right? We have 10x minus 7y is equal to negative 4 and 2x plus 4y is equal to, negative, uh, equal to positive 10. 
Now, we can get rid of the x's by turning both the 10 and the 2. We, the least common multiple of a 10 and a 2 is a 10, so we can turn both those into a 10. Or we could turn the 7 and the 4. The least common multiple of a 7 and a 4 is a 28. So I'd probably get rid of the x's in this case because 10 is just a smaller number and the math seems like it's going to work out a little bit nicer. So I'm going to do that. Now, so to turn a 2 into a 10, I need to multiply it by 5. Now, because both 10x and 2x were positive, I need to multiply this by a negative 5. So before I add those together, I want to multiply them by a negative 5. All right. So negative 5 times positive 2 is a negative 10x. Then we say negative 5 times positive 4y, which is a negative 20. And then negative 5 times positive 10 is a negative 50. So I'm actually going to re I'm just going to bring this down, the original, uh, the first equation, equation number 1. So 10x minus 7y equals negative 4. And then I'm going to add them together. So this would be equation number 1. This would be equation number 2, the second one. So negative 10x plus 10x, those just cancel out, leaving you negative 20y plus negative 7y, which should give you negative 27y. The negative 50 plus negative 4 is negative 54. And then you would divide, you would undo the multiplication of y by negative 27 by dividing both sides by negative 27. And thus you cancel out, leaving you y is equal to positive 2. But that's not good enough. You only have the y value, you also need the x value to finish this. So we're going to go back and we're going to find the x by plugging into one of the equations. It looks like me, to, maybe the second equation is going to be better. Again, it really doesn't matter. Both of them will work. Sometimes one will be a little easier algebraically than the other. Just pick whichever one looks like it's going to be a little nicer to you. So I picked the second one. So it's 2x plus 4y is equal to 10, except y is now 2. So we have 2x plus 4 times 2, or 8, is equal to 10. I want to get the 2x by itself, so I have to undo the addition of 8 by subtracting 8. Whatever I do to one side, I do to the other, giving me 2x is equal to 10 minus 8, or 2. Then I undo the multiplication of x by 2 by dividing by 2 gives me x is equal to 1. So we end up with 1, 2. Over here, we have 5x minus 3y is equal to 21 over 4x plus 2y is equal to 8. So I want to multiply, I want to add some multiple of the first equation to some multiple of the second equation in order to el eliminate one of the variables. So the least common multiple of a 5 and a 4 is a 20. The least common multiple of a 3 and a 2 is a 6. So in this case, I probably want to get rid of the y's. Okay, so the least common multiple of a 3 and a 2 is a 6, so I need to multiply that 3 by 2. The least common multiple of a 2, which is the coefficient of the, of the second uh, y, to multiply the 2 by a 3 to get it turned into a 6. Now, they already had opposite signs. That was a negative 3y, and there's a positive 2y. So they already have opposite signs. I don't need to worry about that. Okay, so now we have to distribute. 2 times 5x is 10x. 2 times negative 3y is negative 6y. 2 times positive 21 is 42. Then we say 3 times 4x is 12x. We say 3 times 2y is 6y. We say 3 times 8 is 24. And we add these together. 10x plus 12x uh, is 22x. Negative 6y plus 6y, those cancel out. 42 plus 24 is going to be 66. Then we undo the multiplication of x by 22 by dividing by 22. And what if we do to one side, we do to the other. Those cancel out. That leaves me x is equal to 3. 66 divided by 22 is 3. Now we're going to plug that x is equal to 3 into one of the original equations. It doesn't matter really which. Just pick whichever one you think is going to be easier. So 5x minus 3y is equal to 21, except now x is 3. So that gives me 15 minus 3y is equal to 20. Whoops, 21. So then we get rid of, we, we solve for the negative 3y by getting rid of this positive 15 by subtracting 15. Whatever we do to one side, we do to the other. Leaving me negative 3y is equal to 21 minus 15, or 6. Then I undo the multiplication of y by negative 3 by dividing by negative 3. And whatever we do to one side, we do to the other. 6 divided by negative 3 is negative 2. So we end up with 3, negative 2.